Hi. In this video, I'll be showing you my process of this whole Shomarin illustration. I'll be breaking down this illustration into nine different parts. This illustration was an experiment for me to create something with a similar mood and tone to some of the work by the artist Rudido. I also looked at the illustrators Mignon and Rag for their tutorials on skin shading and eye coloring. Please bear in mind that I'm not a professional illustrator. Do you take everything I mentioned here with a grain of salt? The aim for this video was to show you what went well along my journey and what didn't, so you can learn from my successes and failures. My initial aims were to try and figure out any design decisions or considerations that she went through when creating her illustrations. The process I'll be showing you here was taken directly from Brudo's Pixiv fanbox. It's a place where you can support the artists in exchange for their behind the scenes stuff. The link will be in the description. In her time lapse, she started off with a rough sketch and then painted full color. This also includes light and shadows. From her process, we can see that her line is on the thinner side. The thicker lines only appears in darker areas and is kept at a minimum. Her illustrations often have this pastel theme, with the main color being purple. The colors are kept in a small range so that they work really well together. And finally, the light and shadows on the character gives the painting a sense of depth and reality. So these were the four main points I tried to follow when creating this illustration. For brushes, I used Mignon's brush collection. The main three being hard pressure, soft pressure opacity, and the smudge tool. These are used most often. The squared brush I mainly use for rough sketches, and the hard opacity pressure brush I mainly use for reflection and shines. But these two can be easily replaced. I also use a cloud brush for painting clouds and waves in the ocean. Mignon's brushes aren't free, but the hard brush and the soft brush is pretty much the same as Photoshop's default brushes. As for the smudge tool, if you don't have one already, I'll take you through a 45 second guide on how to make one in Photoshop. First select the default soft brush, go to Windows Brushes, change size and spacing to this. Turn on Shape Dynamics, enable Pen Tool, leave everything at 0%. Turn on scattering, tick both axes, scatter at 20% and count at 10. Next is transfer and smoothing. Then proceed and untick include tool settings. Go to the smudge tool and select the brush that you've just made. Duplicate the brush but this time tick include tool settings. So now whenever you click on this brush, it'll be a smudge tool on default. And there you go. It was at this stage where I started brainstorming the ideas for the illustration. I decided to draw Marine's new outfit at the beach. The setting meant that I could incorporate shadows casted by the palm leaves. And so I picked out my references from Pinterest and started to draw posts from them. And after some consideration, I selected my favorite post to then continue with the full color rough. Here I tried to keep the color quite desaturated so that they don't fight each other too much. And in the end, it turned out quite depressing. But despite that, I decided to move on and start with the line art. To help you understand my stroke decision better, I looked at Saito Naoki's video on outline guide. The main takeaway from this video was the three distinct roles of the outline, which are the contour line, the line of parts, and details. This was the rough guide to creating my outline. However, if we look at Rudo's illustration, we can see that her illustration lacks a clear contour line. So I decided to remove contour line from my illustration as well in order to mimic her style. We can see here she has a clear line which separates the parts of the character such as the bodies and the wings. And we can see here that her detail lines are even thinner. The parts that have thicker strokes are usually the parts that overlap or have darker values. So first off, I set up my thumbnail in a new Photoshop file. I then draw a new line out on top of the roughs. The purpose of this line art was to clarify the shapes and draw in any details. I decided to redraw the face a couple of times to see which one I preferred. In the end, I went with this expression that I tried to draw in Rudo style. And then the final outline is the cleanup. Pretty straightforward, I just traced the previous line art making sure that everything is as polished as possible. For colouring, I started off with the base colour. I was trying to limit my color palette by only picking colors which are next to each other on the color wheel. I would also check the values of the color from time to time to make sure that nothing is too overpowering. I was wasting a lot of time trying to pick that perfect color for my illustration, when in Photoshop you can always shift the colors around using the hue slider. For the skin, I looked at Bigan's book on how light and shadows interact with different parts of the body. 
I used a combination of hard brush and the smudge tool to create the shadow on the skin. I colored the skin a darker tone and left the part that's hit with light with the original base color. Then I went over it with an even darker color on the smaller parts that direct light can't reach. For the eyes, I followed Rack's coloring tutorials from this book. I like how his eyes have an almost jewel-like property to it. So these are the layers for the eyes. And this is the outcome when combined. So this was probably the most difficult part since I had no idea how to tackle this. I wasn't sure which blending mode I should use or if I should use any at all. In the beginning I painted in solid colors, then later on changed to multiply. This was my first attempt where I partly painted from imagination and it didn't really work that well. So in the end I pretty much just painted the folds in the same way as the reference image. I have one layer as the base color, the second as the normal shadow, and the third as the darker shadow. Lastly, I applied a layer of light on top using linear dodge. For the hair, I really liked how in Rudido's illustration, the hair is really simple, yet it communicates the shape language really well. So that was what I aimed for, but it didn't work out at all. And in the end, I just guessed where the light and shadows would interact with the hair, and this was the outcome. For the glasses, I followed this process by Abby Abby Shrimp from Twitter. I started off with the base color. The second layer was this dark soft shadow. The third is the reflection of the clouds. And the last layer is the highlights and shines. And this is the outcome from this stage. The important thing here was for me to focus on painting a clear shape language. As for the colors, I was shifting the hue and saturation all throughout the process. So the color doesn't have to be perfect on my first attempt. I can always change it later on. For light and shadows, I started with adding a blue cast shadow to the character. Next is the bounce light from the sand. I also added a second bounce light for clothing specifically. Next is the ambient light. Initially, I picked this pinkish color as a placeholder, but I changed it later on. And finally, I added the white highlights. Here is also where I added small details such as metals and accessories. So for the palm leaves, I tried drawing from references. And I gave up. It was too tedious, so I thought it would be easier just to photo bash it. So I added the leaf silhouette and then changed the colors later on. So I used the Fibonacci sequence to help guide me on where I should put the palm leaves. This helped guide the viewer's eyes to the center of the face. I colored the leaves with green with a hint of blue. The reason for picking the cyan color was because it's a complementary color to the red on the character. I also realized that the leaves didn't match the lighting of the character, so I flipped the whole layer. I needed help from Mignon once again for the ocean. Keep in mind that the colors I picked here follow the same theme of cyan, with the exception of the beige on the sandbank. This was done to minimize the color scheme, as we saw in Rudido's artwork. So I started off by adding a gradient to the ocean, then the sandbank, then the wave foam and the clouds. These were added using the cloud brush. Lastly, I added water shines and sparkles in the distance. For the shadows casted by the leaves, my first attempt was to try and guess the direction of the shadows. This was done by erasing the colors in the light layer. I wasn't really satisfied with the result, so I redid the shadow by warping the image of the leaves and then using it as a guide to erase the light. This attempt I was really happy with, so now we're gonna move on to the final stage. This was the stage where the image really comes to life. So first off, I added details, then a green overlay, then green shadows, stray hairs, pink overlay, purple shine, sun ray, dust particles, and lens flares. I also tested using color balance and photo filters, but those didn't really add much. However, curves was a huge part of shifting the contrast of the image. For texture, I used the RGB noise filter on soft light at 20% opacity. This gives the image a bit of gray. And for final touches, I added chromatic aberration. This can be done by pressing the alpha channel, pressing red, selecting back to RGB, selecting the whole image, and then move it slightly. I added a bit of blur to the background using Gaussian Blur to give some depth to the image and again made adjustment to the color to give it a pastel look. And this is the final outcome of the image. This illustration started as my study and exploration to Rudo's artwork. This can be seen reflected heavily in the line art. The process of the line art was probably the highlight of the illustration for me. Through this exploration, I learned a lot about how to make a line art attractive. Pretty much all of my previous illustrations used thicker lines, so I was surprised to see how the feelings of the illustration changed drastically through the line weight alone. In hindsight, I probably lucked out by picking the right reference. Without a good reference with well-placed clothing, the outcome of this illustration wouldn't have turned out as well in my opinion. 
I will definitely have to practice painting from reference more. In terms of time management, my initial aims was to challenge myself and complete this illustration in one whole day. Which I definitely failed at, as this illustration took over 20 hours over the course of one week. I wasted a lot of time by making small tweaks and adjustments that didn't add much to the illustration. Such as water droplets, extra lights, and other small details. Next time, I think it would be smarter for me to paint in the shapes and shadows first, and adjust the color later on to save time. Another downfall of this illustration was the lack of story. Illustrations work well when there is a clear narrative or character interaction. Like, what is going on? How did the viewers came across this situation? Why is she eating a popsicle at the beach and looking at you as if everything is completely normal? I should have planned out the story more at the beginning. In the end, I was really happy with how this turned out and how much I've learned from attempting to recreate something similar to Rurudos. Although it's nowhere near her level, I did achieve my initial goals of creating a full colored rough, try out thin line art, attempt to create a pastel colored theme, and play with shadows created by the surrounding objects. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching.